So where will we be in the next five years with regards to invasive disease? I'm going to talk about three things. Number one is the radical stectomy. How radical we need to be. Number two, the future robotics stectomy. And the third point I'd like to highlight is the role of functional imaging in patients with invasive bladder cancer. For the last couple of decades, there has been a push towards extended lymphadenectomy with regards to bladder cancer. Normally, when we remove the bladders, we remove the lymph nodes around the bladder. But there has been several studies showing that potentially if we go wide and remove a wider template of lymph nodes that drain the bladder, that could potentially help patients and improve outcomes. If you look at the study that evaluated the role of new adjuvant chemotherapy in bladder cancer, the more nodes that we've removed at that time of surgery, the better the survival. Another study showing that if you perform an extended lymphadenectomy compared to the standard lymphadenectomy, patients tend to do better. And the question is, considering all this evidence suggesting that potentially a more radical surgery help with regards to outcomes, is that related to the surgical removal of these micrometastatic lymph nodes? Or is it a surrogate quality indicator remains unknown? The only way to answer this question definitively is through a randomized trials. And there are two trials, one currently completed in Europe that randomized patients to extended versus standard lymphadenectomy, and one North American trial that is currently ongoing and several centers in Canada are participating in, where the patients are being randomized to either an extended, more radical surgery versus the traditional limited lymphadenectomy along with the cystectomy. And hopefully in the next couple of years, we'll get definitive answers to how radical we need to be. The second point is the future of robotic surgery. The robot has been widely disseminated in the States and increasingly being utilized in Canada. And the robot is quite helpful with regards to performing maneuverable, good maneuverability with tight spaces and enhanced visualization. Now, does that help when we're performing a radical cystectomy? A couple of randomized trials have been published. This is the most widely quoted one from the New England Journal of Medicine, where they compared an open radical cystectomy with a robotic radical cystectomy coming from Memorial Sloan Kettering. And what it showed that patients undergoing robotic cystectomy had a prolonged operative time and decreased blood loss with no difference in complications. Now, the robotic cystectomy that was performed in this trial is using the hybrid approach, where the patient undergoes a robotic removal of the bladder, but the urinary diversion is done through a skin incision. Now, over the next few years, we will shed some light whether doing a robotic cystectomy with a complete intracorporeal diversion, meaning the bladder as well as the diversion done through the robot help, would that be beneficial or not? That will remain to be seen. And the third important aspect is what we call functional imaging to define the extent of disease. It will be quite helpful if we're able to precisely define the extent of the bladder cancer within the bladder, i.e., has it penetrated into the fat around the bladder, has it been and spread to the lymph nodes, and has it spread distantly to other organs. So far, what we use is a conventional CT scan or MRI to evaluate these three aspects. And both are quite limited in terms of detecting what we call occult nodal disease, in terms of detecting whether the cancer has been in the fat around the bladder or not. And this is quite important because the management changes significantly when we know all these parameters accurately. So there has been several studies, and hopefully over the next few years we'll get more definitive answers on the role of functional imaging, be it multiparametric MRI, be it supermagnetic uh, particle enhanced MRIs, the various forms of PET scanning, whether we can better detect the extent of disease in the primary, in the lymph nodes, or in distant organs.